Hey, Terry! Maynard! <laughs> How are well, you doing? We're, we're finally done with college. Yep. <laughs> you sure changed since high school. <sighs> I think I look just the same as then. Well, I don't think I've changed. But I guess it's time to find a job, so now what? We can work at a radio station. We know how to do that. Do we want to work at one, or do we want to own one? Where would we buy a radio station? Not buy one. We'll start one. Where? Well, let's look at the map. Here's Benson, where we're at. The radio station there goes about, oh, this far. Then there's a station in Montevideo that covers to about here. One in Marshall that goes about here. There's a section right here that has no station. Madison, Minnesota. Let's start a station there. Sounds like a good idea to me. We'll do well there, but where are we going to get money? <laughs> Dad, have I got a deal for you. Dad, we need you. I think we have a winner. With our dad's investment and our knowledge and hard work, we'll succeed. Yeah, but now that we've decided where, how do we go about it? What are we going to need? Huh, that's a good question. I guess we need a license from the FCC. And we need a frequency on the radio dial so people know where to find us. We'll need transmitters and an antenna. How about a tower? I uh, will need land for that tower. I think we have to get permission from the Federal Aviation Administration to put it up. We'll have to put up a building also to house the transmitter. We need a studio. You know, I found three acres we could buy north of Madison for the tower. And there's space we could rent on Main Street, right in downtown Madison. We can get some used equipment. We'll need a mixing council, microphones, turntables, tape recorders, among other stuff. We'll need a music library of 33 and 45 RPM records. And we'll have to get contracts with SCAP, BMI, and SESAC, so we have the right music to play. We're ready to go. We're on the air. KLQP Radio started on January 31st, 1983 serving a five-county area in western Minnesota and part of eastern South Dakota, like the Western Guard and the Dawson Sentinel. We're still, we're here. still all here. Join us on the radio. Turn on the radio, let's hear the garden show, hear all the latest news. The price of corn is down. Maynard is such a clown. Find out who just died. Where is the concert? Listen to the football game. So listen every day to KLQP. KLQP. This has been a great journey through the history of Lacquaparle County. Have you learned anything? Oh, absolutely. But I didn't know. I don't know what's going on. Where are you going? Huh? Where are you going? To Madison. This is the kind of a roundabout way to get there. Who are you? Huh? Who are you? Robert Fly. You're a pilot, famous worldwide. Yes, well, I suppose I am. I'm a poet. How come you're so famous and I'm not? Uh, perhaps because my poet's poems have been published. Well, my poem should be published. Maybe you can help me get it published. I'd have to hear one first. Well, I got a great one. <clears throat> I have a dog and a cat. The dog ate my hat. 
and the cat being a cat just sat. Isn't that a great poem? <laughs> I think you want to do a little more work on that. Do you know there are people out there? <laughs> yes, I know. You're standing on a stage. That's the audience. We've been presenting the history of Lacoparo County for its 150th anniversary. Well, what a wonderful endeavor. Did you discuss pheasant hunting? Uh, no, I guess we haven't. It's not really part of Lacoparo history. Of course it is. I wrote a poem about pheasant hunting. It's called Hunting Pheasants in the Cornfield. Let me read you one verse so you can understand better my poetry. What is so strange about a tree alone in an open field? It is a willow tree. I walk around and around it. My body is strangely torn and cannot leave it. At last, I sit down beneath it. How long you been writing poetry? Mm, it was, there was a teacher in high school who interested me in poetry. All you teachers out there know that you make a difference. You never know who may, you may inspire to do something great. Tell us about your life. Well, I was born on a farm in Lycoparo County in 1926. I enlisted in the Navy in 1944 and was in the service for two years. I went to St. Olaf College a, after a year, and I transferred to Harvard. I graduated in 1950 and spent a few years in New York. Those years were a struggle. I was determined to write 12 hours a day, six days a week. I would work one day a week as a file clerk, typist, or a painter. I'd go to an employment agency for painting jobs but I usually got fired by noon. <laughs> Finally, they assigned me to paint the inside of a warehouse in Brooklyn. I'd go there by myself every Thursday and paint a portion of the wall blue. If the owner complained and asked why my job wasn't done yet, I'd say, I don't know. Some of the guys have gotten sick. It's hard to get good help. I lived in New York for three years. Then, in 1954, I attended a writer's workshop at the University of Iowa. I received a Fulbright grant that allowed me to go to Norway to translate Norwegian poetry into English. There were these wonderful poets whose poetry had not, had not been read in the United States because no one had ever translated it into English. I decided to start a magazine for this poetry and called it the 50s, then the 60s, the 70s. We also published essays on poets and frankly insulted those who deserve it. During this time, I was living back on my farm in Madison, raising my family. I was on that farm for 25 years. What do you think your most famous work is? Mm, probably Iron John, a book about men. That book has been an international bestseller and translated into many different languages. Where did you write most of your poetry? Probably in the studio on the farm. I took an old country school and converted it into my studio. I filled it with books. I love books. In the 1980s, the studio, with all my books and furniture, were moved to the Lecoparo County Museum. I think there are around 5,000 books in that studio, and they were all mine. All right, so back to my poem. <clears throat> Do I have a chance of getting it published? Nope, not a chance. <laughs> a 
Another important part of our history is our patriotism, our men and women serving in the armed forces and our National Guard. The 1st Battalion, 151st Field Artillery, Battery B of the Red Bull Infantry Division of the Minnesota National Guard is located at Madison. We have active members of the Dawson and Madison VFWs, Marietta Bellingham, and Boyd American Legions. I thank, well, let me introduce Major Lyndon Warden, U.S. Army retired, to explain the history of the National Guard and the veterans' organizations in Lacoprawl County. Thank you. The National Guard Armory in Madison was built in 1914 and today continues to operate. Matter of fact, that was the very first unit I joined. The Dawson Army was built in 1923, but when the National Guard restructured in 1992, the building was no longer used. Unlike many armories that were demolished, Dawson's Armory was remodeled to house the Library and Heritage Court apartments. Our country has and continues to have a substantial number of us young men and women willing to serve our country from the Civil War to the present. Some have paid the ultimate price. <coughs> These soldiers are remembered every year at the Memorial Day service held in Lacoparo County. Members of the American Legion or veterans of the foreign wars will serve as honor guard and play taps at military funerals. For example, Carlisle Larson started playing taps in 1906 and has played 236 funerals. Unfortunately, Carlisle had recently passed and a recording of him, of him playing the taps were played. That makes number 237. Others that have been held as POWs, such as Gordon Westby, who was a prisoner of war during World War II. I would like him to tell you his story. I am pleased to be able to talk to you today. I think it is important to remember the world wars so that perhaps they never happen again. I was in the Battle of Bulge in Belgium, a very hard battle. I was captured by the Nazis on December 18, 1944. We were marched every day from daybreak till, until nightfall until April 12, 1945. That was 115 days of marching. We were given food maybe once every other day or once every third day and no water. We were not allowed to talk to each other. I was exhausted and sick and was able to march anymore, so the Nazis just left me. I was found by the Americans and taken to an England hospital. I weighed 90 pounds, but I came home in July of 1945. I was married in 1947 and worked at Dawson Mills. There was an American Legion post started in Dawson in 1921 called the Oscar Lee Post Number 177 after the first war casualty in the area. The VFW post number 5247 of Dawson was chartered in 1947 and named the Strand Sable VFW after Harris Strand and Lester Sable, the first two men from Dawson who'd lose their lives in World War II. The Madison VFW was organized in 1941 with 40 charter members, all veterans of World War I. One of its main sponsorships is Summer Madison Baseball and youth, youth Summer Baseball and Madison Christmas Decorating Contest, which it has sponsored since 1949. The American Legion was organized in Madison in 1919. Both the VFW and the American Legion also have auxiliary organizations. The disabled American veterans and its auxiliary have members from the seven county area. All of these organizations serve veterans and their families and the larger community. Bellingham's American Legion was started in 1920. Marietta and Boyd also had an American Legion. Each of our branches of our military have played an important role in our history. Army, Air Force, Navy, Marines, Coast Guard, and now the Space Force. Is there anyone in the audience who has served in the military? Please stand so that we may recognize those who have sacrificed for the greater good of our country. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the men and women who have served this great nation.
We've covered a lot of history of Lacaparral County. I'm sure we missed some. I never realized that we had such a rich history. It is a rich history. We hope you've enjoyed the journey. Good afternoon, folks. Thank you for coming. See you in another 150 years. <laughs>